All right, great. Thank you, John. So, uh, so we we heard uh, uh, Jim Hagamishnabe this morning uh, talking uh, to a very large audience. And uh, Jeff, why don't you why don't you join me? And um, he talked about medical devices being input to the analytic databases. Uh, he talked about everything being mobile and cloud. Everything. Now, it's interesting to me. Um, we heard a little bit about this last year. We we certainly heard a lot about mobile last year. You know, Jeff, but we didn't hear a ton about the cloud. You know, and, and I think that's really what the Success Factors acquisition was about. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Alex Williams, why don't, you, uh, why don't you join us as well? That'd be fantastic. Hey, Alex. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Dave. Hey, Alex, thanks for coming on. So uh, let me just reset here. We're here live in Orlando at uh, SAP uh, Sapphire Now, SAP's big user conference. A lot of suits, you know, very formal you know, kind of crowd, very C-level executives everywhere in the audience. We heard some crisp messaging uh, this morning from Jim Hageman Snabe, the co-CEO. Uh, Bill McDermott yesterday, also Chris messaging. Bill McDermott's really the former sales guy. Snabe is really the product guy, right? And I thought, Alex, that Snabe's commentary was consistent with the messaging we heard yesterday. Simplicity, personalization, the vision of the future. But uh, somehow I thought it resonated better with the audience. What did you think? I, I think it. I think it did. I think that he really get, got more into like the heart of of the technology, but really looking at it from that business perspective. But really helping outline what Hana means to the company and what cloud what cloud means to the company, and you know by doing that he can can really kind of demonstrate that cloud really is the future. It is part of IT now, and it, it has to be. And mobile really is the node for IT. Is that IT will now increasingly not be in one place. It'll be everywhere. And I think that's really the message that I got, you know, out of, out of uh, what Snabe said. He talked about um, the intelligence intelligent business web and the, the lines blurring between different types of businesses. Jeff, is he talking about essentially consolidating supply chains and virtualizing supply chains? What, what did you make of that? Uh, I think that's certainly one aspect, but he, he made a comment something along the lines of, you know, you can offer, companies can now offer business services, even if they're uh, banking services, excuse me, even if you're not a bank. So the idea being you can integrate your partner services into your offerings in a, in a seamless way so that you don't have to actually build or, or supply all the components of a given service, but the web allows you, this, this kind of intelligent business web allows you to integrate all those pieces from your partners to offer a comprehensive offering. There's also a lot of talk about productivity um, and the impact that uh, things like HANA are going to have on productivity. It's an interesting perspective, I think. You know, w we think about productivity from the, remember the PC era, everybody got PCs in their hands and it was a huge, pro massive productivity boom. Um, and prior to that, you really never saw a, a relationship, statistical relationship between productivity and information technology investment. Snabe put forth a vision today of really is extending the productivity through analytics, through, <clears throat> he didn't really say big data a lot, but through analytics and, um, and really dramatically changing the way in which customers are able to respond, his customers and companies are able to respond, driving massive increases in revenue, and that's really where I, what I think he's talking about in terms of productivity increases. I saw, I was wondering where he was going with the population boom and the mobile boom. And then I think he helped crystallize it when he talked about how much data people generate. And by the generation of that data, it's turning supply chains upside down. And in the process, though, there's the technology because memory is so much greater, you know, in the technology, right? in memory technology is so much more advanced now and you can get so much more data in there that the supply chains are becoming disrupted but you can also optimize the supply trains supply chains and bring much deeper efficiencies and so I thought he did a good job in explaining that and then bring it back home to what we heard yesterday from you know the Burberry you know, CEO the Ace CEO and the Coinstar CEO who talked a lot about those things so, Jeff, this is kind of like David Floyer's scenario where you're, you're taking a transactional data and operational data, you're bringing it in, you know, uh, commingling it, essentially. Maybe not, uh, certainly not all of it. Um, you know, you're going to have your Hadoop, you know, batch processes. Right. You know, you want to sort of 
keep the data where it is, but you're going to pull nuggets into the operational systems. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. And, and that kind of is what HANA enables, mm -hmm. I guess. Talk about that a little bit. Right. Well, you know, HANA, we heard uh, McDermott yesterday kind of uh, mention a couple times uh, as HANA as a, a big data solution. Uh, but it's not exactly, it's certainly not akin to Hadoop. And, and the, the relationship there is, you know, Hadoop is where you're going to do your big batch processing, crunch a lot of historical data. You're going to take s segments of that or, or some of the insights, the nuggets, as you say. That's where you kind of load those into, into a HANA in memory situation where you can now act on those in your operational systems and actually turn those insights into action. So when a customer uh, exhibits a certain behavior, makes a certain purchase, kicks off another uh, activity, either an upsell or cross-sell opportunity, whatever it might be, based on the insights that you perhaps derived from a totally another system. But now it's living in HANA, and in real time, you can take action. Yeah, and, I, and, and another David Floyerism, he defines real time, Alex, as fast enough so that you don't lose the customer. And that's really <laughs> that's a good, a good definition, that. right, yeah, don't you think? I mean, that's really you know, because good. people split hairs over really what is real time. Yeah, and I think people are starting to split hairs over what is big data. And, you know, and it's, I think when you can put 100 terabytes of data in memory, which looks like SAP is gunning to do, that's significant. And the amount of, it's not just what, the, what you can do with, to, to do with one thing, it's what you can do with multiple things with HANA when you're starting to use it in an optimized way, for instance, in financial services. I mean, I saw an example yesterday where IBM has developed some methods for how to track workflow capital better for the CFO, and they can now track multiple uh, KPIs much better than they ever could before. They can, do, they can get results in 15 seconds that used to take hours. They can get results now in just 15 hours that would take a few months. And so now, I mean, that just turns everything upside down. And so that's, maybe it's not like, you know, so much more data that you know that you know that we that is that they can access. I mean, it's not like you know petabytes of data, but this is where I think where you start to see the the, the capabilities for integrations of real time data with things like Hadoop, right? So you can push that data back in, into Hadoop. You can start using like you know, uh, you know Flash much more effectively to really optimize that real time data and start creating kind of this cycle between those two different types of data. He also took a little stab, uh, very very minor, but it was it was subtle. It was, it, SAP really doesn't trash the competition. You know? They're like exact opposite of, of or, or, Oracle. Yeah, Hasso might tomorrow. I hope he does because that will make a good review for us. But um, he said something to the effect of imagine where all data is in memory and you don't need any traditional disk-based database. That's all, you know, obviously a sleight of hand at, at, at Oracle, but also others. I mean, EMC, NetApp, we're going to have them on the cube. Today, I want to ask those guys, you know, Absolutely. What, what do you think that means to, to you guys? Now, I don't think all data is going to be in memory. I think all active data will eventually be in some type of memory or flash, and then the bit bucket will still be the spinning disk because it's, it's clearly going to be less expensive. But, you know, I think that's really what he meant. And that really speaks to some major changes in the architecture, the I.O. architecture of the system. And, again, I keep bringing up David Floyer, but he's written some great stuff on, on Wikibon. If you Google, or actually go to Wikibon and search IO-centric design. Well, what company is really benefiting out of this more than anyone else? Well, Fusion IO. Well, Fusion IO, for sure. And, and I think, the, so for the past 15 years, we've seen function sort of migrate out of the server, you know, out outside the other side of the channel to disk arrays and, you know, things like snapshots and replication and other data sharing techniques and data movement. That function, maybe not that function per se, but a lot of function is now moving back because Flash is persistent. You're cer certainly seeing it in laptops. I hope, don't, I hope I never have another laptop with a hard disk in it. I don't think I ever will. Why don't the economics permeate into the enterprise? They clearly are going to, you know. And so the, to me, this is what Snabe was talking about when he talked about the productivity increases, massive increases in productivity. Well, what's, what's productivity? at its simplest form is revenue per employee. That's a great measure of productivity. So how do you increase revenue per employee? Well, you, if you can allow people to see things in near real time and act on them and have an I impact the outcome, that's going to increase productivity. And I think that's what he was talking about. Massive, massive changes coming. Yeah, I mean, just to make, simplify it even more, just think of, uh, you know, what, what 
in memory allows you to do in terms of uh, touch the customer uh, that many more times in, in a given day, in an hour, whatever it might be. Whereas a uh, you, an employee in, in any given uh, you know vertical market might take an hour to in interact with a customer or, or work on a customer problem because the system re required that much time can now do it in maybe five minutes. If that's the case, well, you can do the math and you can see how many more customers uh, in customer problems and situations you can deal with in any given period. And that's going to certainly increase uh, the productivity. That's pretty much the definition of it. Now, let's talk about uh, success factors. Uh, you had mentioned, I'd never seen Lars speak before, uh, Lars uh, Dalgard, who's the founder and CEO of Success Factors and now a member of the uh, executive board of, of SAP. I'd never seen him speak before. You said he's a fantastic speaker. He does a lot of hand waving, a lot of rah rah, but very credible, I yeah. thought, and uh, really motivating, right? And and quite impressive. So, mm -hmm. tell me what you thought of his uh, his discussion, then we'll get into it a little bit. Well, I think he is he uh, he represents that future that we're talking that we've just been talking about, where the, the cloud really is IT now, and how does uh, how does SAP adapt to that? And what I got out of it after talking to some analysts afterwards is that we're starting to hear a lot more about this kind of loosely coupled infrastructure, and SAP will increasingly talk about that loosely coupled infrastructure, and they'll develop a unifying UI. And I think that's what Lars wanted to show during the keynote, and I believe he did with showing how social fits into uh, human capital management for instance, and what I'm hearing also, how collaborative analytics are being you know, used um, inside Streamwork. The question I have is how will these, how will they start dividing the territories here? What will they, what will they do? And so we're hearing about financial on demand, we can travel on demand, we also have career on demand. What those, I think, represent are what Lars really is going to focus on, you know, and I think in large part with people like Samir Patel, who, I, who I'm so excited to see a blogger, someone who really is part of our community, becoming like a senior ranking guy at SAP, and I think people like him will be instrumental to uh, SAP um, as, as, as they, you know, they embark on this future, which really, I believe, is a loosely coupled world that, we're, that they're really going to that they're going to really kind of uh, focus on. Well, you know, loosely coupled, but, but uh, highly integrated, I think he said. Loosely coupled, and, and I'm sorry, loosely coupled, but end-to-end -end integration. Right. So loosely coupled meaning you can have your choice as to what, I guess, modules. I'm using that term module. He didn't use it because it's such an on-premise term. But, yeah. But what software function you can choose. Right. Right, whether it's talent management, or he gave a, a number of examples. Um talent management, procurement, social learning, learning, recruitment, and there's you know, probably a half dozen others. Sure. So you can choose those I independently right. or together. He, and he drew you know, uh, many, many permutations, I don't know, you know, 10 factorial permutations of combinations that you could choose right. all in the cloud. The other thing that struck me is his title. He, he, he's up there, and he's talking about his Lars Dalgar, beautiful. The, the, the SAP um, graphics. graphics are just fantastic, they are. aren't they? And the really whole good. vibe here is just really, really professional. Really I think the best yeah, of any event. Really as good as IBM, maybe even better. And, better. and IBM is, is very yeah. good, you know? Yeah, but and IBM's done a great job with their Smarter Planet, but kind of the, the, the sophistication here and the elegance and... Elegance is a good word yeah. for it, and then so, but but so I digress. But so his title is founder and CEO of Success Factors and member of the SAP Executive Board. So they've empowered. Now that to me is very, very. It says a lot about what they're trying to achieve culturally. That's they're saying they're we want you to bring your mojo yeah. to SAP. Now you're in charge of five thousand people, presumably yeah. a lot of developers. Yes. Make it happen. Yeah. And. And this guy can really is a real visionary. Yeah, he is. He, and he's really fast. And, and apparently, what I mean, what I've been hearing is that they have really been saying to people, they've been weeding out people, you know, because they they're saying we just need to work faster. We need to be able to be more aggressive. And there's people, in, you know, in SAP that have historically been developing, you know, uh, systems for years and years and years, who don't feel, you know, don't fit as well with this cloud-up model. And you, what's interesting about what you say about his title, it's a similar title to Vishal, you know, who, who is in the executive board, who's really Hasso's, like, you know, right-hand man, right? And so 
that to me says a lot about you know about uh, about Lars's uh, significance in the company. Yeah. So, so, so no, I was just going to say I think that acquisition was a, a, about a lot more than just the technology. That was about bringing on, as you said, a visionary, somebody who can actually spearhead the entire cloud uh, approach. And, the, and and we heard Snabe talking a lot about cloud in his uh, keynote this morning. I mean, that, that's a key key part of their uh, go to. Uh, strategy for the next couple of, uh, of years, decades perhaps. So uh, I think it was much more about kind of bringing in the, um, the IQ, the, the visionary, than necessarily just the technology. Well, there are a lot of ways to skin an acquisition. Um, you know, sometimes you just jam it right in, right, and do, do tight integration. Other times you, you just leave it alone. Right. This is not a leave it alone deal. I mean, but not, I'm, I had trouble sort of discerning the lines between success factors and SAP. Now, uh, the acquisition is Pretty recent, right? yeah. so yeah. the lines I'm sure are still pretty stark. But so let's go through it. So he mentioned he has a 5,000 person team. I presume that's a lot more than just success factors, right? Um, he said at the same time he said success factors has been in business 10 years. They've got 100% in the cloud. He said 15.6 million unique users. Now, I believe Snabe used that number as well in his talk that we have 15.6 million users in the cloud. Now that would suggest that SAP. I don't know if they're commingling SAP cloud users yeah. or that right. says SAP didn't have any, you know, <laughs> yeah. which essentially is, 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 is the case. Yeah. Right? That's why they made this acquisition of success factors is to get them into the cloud. And they were late. I mean, there's no question about it. Um, almost 500 million in bookings in 2012. I, I, I didn't say run rate. He, he didn't use those words. He said we're, we're nearing 500 million in in 2012 bookings. I inferred that to mean year to date. I don't know what you guys thought about that. That would suggest they're, they're at, a, at a billion dollar plus run rate. I was I think wondering about that myself. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah the, uh, bookings, you know, not necessarily the same as revenue and... No, he said billings. Right, so the question is exactly right, but I think if it was, if they were on a so billion book, dollar run so rate... So billings would be revenue. Right. <laughs> got a break and uh, so we're here live uh, this is Dave Vellante of wikibon.org I'm with Alex Williams of Silicon Angle and Jeff Kelly of, of Wikibon this is day two of Sapphire now uh, and we are going to bring you wall-to-wall -wall coverage all, all week and uh, we'll be right back after this word from our sponsors <laughs> <laughs> 